Hi everyone, Mr. Born Garden here with a quick video on how to log in using Google using a Firebase. And really, this is useful anytime you're wanting to uh, know who the person is that's using your uh, web application and have your program respond accordingly. Maybe show their photo, uh, know their email address, those kinds of things. Uh, probably also use it if you're going to be then saving other stuff into Firebase later on. Uh, but it's fairly quick and simple to get up and running. First thing you need to do is connect up to Firebase. So firebase.google.com. And once you're logged in, uh, you'll get um, a go to console screen, uh, or you can just go to console.firebase.google.com. And you'll get a screen that looks something like this. Uh, create a, add a new project. Okay, so example for video and project. Google have a tendency to change their screens around, so don't worry if this looks a little different next time you're trying to use it, but basically you, you want to find the thing that's for adding for a project, and then add Firebase to web app. All right, and this is the key, key information that you're going to need for your HTML page once it loads up. Okay, here we go. So I click copy, and now I go across to my WebStorm, and I'm just going to come in after my body tag here, paste that information in. All right. So basically, what's going on here is Firebase is loading a whole pile of its information, uh, that it, basically all the functions that they've got that they've written up for us. Uh, that we will be using for to access uh, bits and pieces uh, of its functionality. So if we actually dump that into the browser to see it, it's just a big JavaScript file. Okay, and then these are the secure codes necessary for our program to be able to access our Firebase database that we just created. All right, so we put all this in, and now we've got a script tag as well. So I can just um, push this down a bit to make room for my own program. Okay, so this is the bit that needs to stay here, the codes and the Firebase initialize app. From there, we do what we usually do. And I'm gonna create an app function and a window.onload equals app. Okay, so if, um, this will, um, let's see, let's just put in a h1, hello, uh, let's see, client name, there we go, alright, so let's just test that our app works, so document.get element by id client name dot in your html is equal to there all right so all right so basically when app runs it's going to get uh look in our html for the thing with an id or client name and it's going to set it to the phrase there with an exclamation so we've got hello and then inside the span, basically the word there is going to appear. So if I open that in Chrome, there we go. Hello there. Nothing too surprising. All right, but let's get the login part working since that's, that's what we're actually here for. So we've got all this business, okay, but, and now we know that the rest of it basically functions the way that we are used to. What I'm actually going to do is we're going to create a, another function out here called login. And it's, it's a slightly easier way of doing it because then you can just copy and paste this and use it for all your um, other, for any programs that you create that you want to use this with. Um, okay, and so what we're going to do is when we load, we're going to run login instead of app, and then we're going to make our login function if we've success, successfully logged in. 
we're going to make that run the app function for us. Okay, uh, but if we're not logged in, then it won't. So um, to activate this in Firebase, it's just uh, Firebase dot auth to use the authentication functions, and it's called on auth state changed. So whenever the state or the status of your authentication has changed, um, basically, uh, okay, so whenever uh, the status of your login has changed, run this function. So a new login happened, so we're going to need to just create a function called new login happened. Obviously, you can call this whatever you want. Okay, so basically, in here, Firebase will just automatically take care of the login process, and when it happens, it'll run this. Now, inside here, basically, we want to check uh, this needs a parameter. Okay, so Firebase will pass to this function the login information of what whatever has occurred. Okay, so if we receive it in a thing called user, and I'm just wanting to check if this, this thing called user actually exists, okay, then that means the user is signed in. So whatever we want to happen when the user is signed in, in this case, we're going to run app. Okay, and I'm just going to forward all the user information to the app so that it can access the email address or the login names that the person used. If they're not logged in, so else, uh, then we need to tell Firebase, well, you need to prompt them to log in. And that's just a couple of lines. Just copy and paste this in. Oops. Especially when I'm making errors. Google auth provider. Firebase.auth. I've just remembered something else we've got to do. Sign in with redirect provider Oops. okay so this just is a fancy way of telling firebase to get our person to log in using their google account and now before this can work we need to jump back to firebase okay so we close that box we go into authentication and sign in method. All right, Google, these are all disabled. So just hit the little edit and enable. All right, uh, whitelist client is, yeah, that's fine. All good, save that. Google is enabled, so now it should work for us. And we come back here. All right. So we are logging in, and if it all runs correctly, then our app will receive this thing called user. Now, inside user, there's a few little uh, useful variables that are handy to know about. All right, uh, basically, they are called. Let's, let's write these down here for you so you can see them. Uh, so we'll have a user display name, okay, with the capital N. Uh, we will have a user.email, we will have a user.photo URL, which is a link to whatever photo they've used for their Google profile, and user.uid, which is basically just a, an alphabet numerical uh, identifier that's unique to that person. Um, it, it, it'll come in handy later on, so it's just useful to know that that's there. But we've got this thing called user, dis so we've got user display name. All right, so this is just a JavaScript object. All right, so instead of saying there, let's put in their display name. So now if I run this, you know, I've done everything correctly. All right, you can see, okay, it's asking me to log in. So I'll pick one of my many Google accounts. Okay, an example for video is asking for you to view your email address and your basic profile. That's all normal stuff. And now this should say, 
Oh, there we go. Hello, Paul Von Gavin. I was just being a little impatient. All right, so we are logged in. Uh, we can write our app function now as normal. We can set up a canvas and we can set up timers and set up events and do whatever else we would normally do inside an app, except we also have this thing called user inside there with these four values that we can use that tells us who the person is. So for example, if I wanted to show my photo, uh, let's create an image tag. Uh, alt. Uh, you don't need the alt. Let's just do that. All right. Uh, let's give it an ID. That's fine. Need off the, off the moment. Uh, my photo. Well, actually, I use client name here, so let's just be consistent. Client photo. All right. And then here, I can just say document dot get element by ID client photo. Now it's not in a HTML because we're not putting it. Uh, we don't want whatever we're about to type to go in between and opening in a close whoop, close image tag. Okay, because that's that's the bit that you know HTML fills in. We don't want that. We want to put it into this source SRC. All right, and so that is dot set attribute. And the attribute is src and the value that we want to put in there is user dot uh, photo url let's get rid of this thing okay so now save run there we go oh it's a photo from canada like four or five years ago there you go okay so great big horrible photo okay so uh, that is all you need to know for how to log in with Google using Firebase. All right, I'll finish this video here and then continue the next video on how to save and retrieve data using a Firebase database um, with this as pre-watching. Okay, hope that helps.